So you're running Clipper on your 3D printer. After all, all the cool kids are doing it. But now you're wondering, what's next? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm going to share with you my nine must have Clipper upgrades to get the most out of this incredibly powerful firmware. Let's get after it. These days, more and more printers are running Clipper, even out of the box, and even on the most cursory level, the reasons are really clear. First of all, Clipper is natively web-enabled, meaning that you can manage your printer from the computer in a way that would have previously required third-party Octoprint installation. Second, it is much more developed when it comes to speed printing must-haves like pressure advanced and input shaping, allowing you to print much faster and with better quality. Many people, myself included, also find that the simplified, cleaner code base runs faster and lighter than Octoprint. And yet, one of the things that keeps people loyal to Octoprint is the incredibly mature plugin ecosystem and directory, which offers hundreds of plugins that add amazing functionality to do just about anything you could possibly want. Fortunately, Clipper has come a long way in a very short time, and as you're about to see, you can use a few easy to install upgrades to gain back most, if not all, of that awesome functionality. To be honest, I'm actually making this video just as much for myself as I am for all of you, because with more and more printers that I need to review on the channel shipping with Clipper, I really needed to write down a simple to follow checklist of all the plugins that I like to install on each one I'm going to actually keep. So I'm gonna put them in the video in the exact order that you need to install them, because some of the latter ones will depend on the former ones being installed. But you can still use the chapters below to skip around if something doesn't interest you or if you already have something installed. Okay, hold up, hold up, wait, stop the show. Editing Jonathan here because in the process of actually doing all these upgrades that I'm about to share with you for my own printers in order to record the process, I actually screwed a couple of them up, which made me realize that before you go any further, you should probably install a 10th upgrade, and that's Clipper Backup. As the name suggests, this tool allows you to quickly back up your Clipper installation to GitHub, providing you with version management and redundancy. I'm gonna be honest, I'm struggling to actually get it working correctly myself on some of my printers because I have zero experience with Git, and it seems that the instructions are only suited for Raspberry Pi installations, not the MKS maker base boards that a lot of printers are running these days. But I'm going to link in the description below, and I'll also submit an issue on GitHub to the creator so that they can hopefully expand the instructions. Look, you don't have to do this step, and I would hate for you to get stuck here and not continue with the rest of these plugins. But if you proceed installing the rest of the plugins without at least manually backing up your SD card, know that you do so at your own risk. Okay, back to the video as I'd originally planned it. Right off the bat, let's talk about K-I-A-U, K-I-A-U, K-A-I-U-H, or the Clipper Installation and Update Helper. As the name would imply, this is a simple utility that allows you to quickly install updates and upgrades right through the command line interface. To install it, you simply need to SSH into your printer using a command line interface and run two simple commands, followed by a third one to actually launch it. I'll link to the instructions in the description, of course, but it's literally that easy, and you can just pause the video right here and run the commands by typing them off of the screen if you want. With this plugin installed, we are now ready to install many of the different tools and plugins that it enables, such as... I know, I know. This one isn't really an upgrade so much as it is switching the preferred web interface, so skip it if you want. But personally, I prefer the look and feel of Mainsail for a lot of reasons I won't get into in this video. At the same time, I've noticed that almost all of the Clipper native printers that I've been reviewing actually come with its alternative, Fluid. Because thanks to K-I-A-U-H, adding Mainsail is as simple as going into the command line and selecting it. 
What's cool about this is that you can run both Fluid and Mainsail on separate ports, so you don't have to worry about uninstalling or breaking anything. By the way, speaking of printers that come out of the box with Clipper, or in this case, Mainsail, I need to take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, which is Sobel, makers of the SV07. The SV07 is a highly affordable entry-level printer which comes out of the box with some really incredible features that are normally only reserved for much higher-end, higher-cost printers. It features a full-color touchscreen, clipper firmware, a full metal hot end, planetary drive extruder gears, and an innovative auxiliary cooling fan. All for an insanely low price of $269. For this reason, it is my number one recommended entry-level or budget 3D printer. And by the way, it pairs great with Sobel's new line of beautiful filaments, including their rainbow transitions, dual extrusions, and much, much more. Sobel is a longtime supporter of the channel, and I've never tried a product of theirs that I didn't like. So to support the channel, check them out using the link in the description below. All right, let's get back to Clipper upgrades. The next upgrade we need to make before getting into the more advanced stuff is actually custom macros. If you don't know, macros are little snippets of G-code, kind of like routines, which you can call up at any time. Now, why would you want to have little snippets of G-code? Well, once you have them ready, you can add a button on your clipper interface or on your touchscreen. You can call them up in slice G-code, such as at the start or end of a print, and much, much more. Now, Clipper makes it super easy to write and use macros simply by adding them into any included config file with a specific syntax, like so. So before you really get into the weeds with your 3D printer, it's definitely worth investing some time in flushing those macros out. Here are a few macros that I personally like to set up or customize on every single printer I own. Print start, configuring what should happen when a print first starts, especially things like bed meshing, which I'll cover in just a moment, or things like changing LED statuses and much, much more. Now, most printers already have a print start macro configured, but oftentimes it's really bare bones. Print end. Same idea, but when a print ends. Load and unload. Automatically heat up the nozzle, then extrude or retract a set length of filament based on your hot end to completely clear it out in one click. Clean nozzle. For printers like my Voron with a nozzle brush, this is a routine to brush the nozzle a few times before important steps like bed leveling or Z homing. LEDs on, off, or status. Here you can turn the light LEDs on or off with the check of a button or based on whether or not the printer is working, and you can change the colors of any RGB LEDs based on what the printer is currently doing, such as temperature or heating up or meshing. Take snapshot. Here you can use a USB connection to trigger a snapshot on an external DSLR or mirrorless camera. More on that in a second. Now those are just a few of the macros that I find useful, but the sky really is the limit and you can definitely go wild creating all sorts of cool custom macros for your needs. Now, if you guys want, I'll be happy to make a text document and share my own personal macros with those of you who are Patreon supporters if you want to save some time. So just let me know in the comments below. All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes. The truly must-have upgrades that you simply shouldn't run Clipper without, in my opinion. No Clipper upgrade deserves that title as much as Exclude Object, a module which identifies each of the objects on your print bed and then allows you to cancel individual objects mid-print without losing the entire bed. I can't tell you how many times this module has saved me time, filament, and therefore money, especially when you consider that many times a failed print will spread throughout the build plate and cause all the other adjacent parts to fail as well. Installing Exclude Object is as simple as adding it into a config file, adding its own config file, and then referencing it in your printer.cfg, and then updating your slicer to include the necessary code in the G code that it exports. As with everything in this video, link in the description below. Now that we have Exclude Object installed, we can add the next game-changing upgrade that depends on it, and that's Camp. 
Clipper Adaptive Meshing and Purging. I first learned about this amazing upgrade from Daniel over at Modbot, and I'll link to his full explanation video and tutorial in the description below. Basically though, Camp allows your printer to do a more focused, detailed bed mesh and purge only in the areas that will actually be used during that print. This means less time meshing your entire bed, more density of the meshed points, therefore more detail, and all around better, more reliable prints. I don't know about all of you, but personally, I can't sit around 24 hours a day and watch my printers. I wish I could, but I also, you know, like seeing my children's faces once in a while. This is especially challenging when your printers are in one location, such as your home, and your life is in another location, such as work. Without a way to watch your printers, how can you possibly prevent catastrophic failures and kilos of wasted filament? Fortunately, these next two apps, Obico and Octo Everywhere, solve that particular problem in two different ways. First, they enable remote access to your printers using a secure tunnel, meaning that you can not only see your printer's webcam stream, if you have one, but also start and stop prints remotely if you so desire. Second, each of these apps offers an AI spaghetti detection feature that will alert you or even stop the print if things are getting too hairy, no pun intended. Best of all, they both work amazingly well with Clipper and are a breeze to install. This video isn't sponsored by either of those companies, but I do use their products and recommend them all the time. One of the most popular and powerful upgrades for OctoPrint is OctoLapse, a plugin which automatically creates buttery smooth time lapses by moving the print head at the start of every layer. Fortunately, Clipper now has its own easy to install module that will do the exact same thing. And personally, as with all things Clipper, I find it to be simpler to configure and use than its OctoPrint counterpart. Now, JJ Shankles has a great tutorial video on how to set all this up, so I will link to that video below. And as you'll see in just a moment, we can not only do these time lapses with the onboard camera or plugged in webcam on our printer, but also with a little work, we can even connect a high quality external camera as well. And that brings us to these two. Now I'll admit it, these two plugins are not as much of a must have as the rest of the items on the list, unless you're a content creator, but if you want to make decent looking time lapses just like these, they definitely are. The first is GPhoto 2. It's actually a piece of code for Raspberry Pis and for similar boards, which allows them to communicate over USB with your proper camera, like your DSLR or whatever, allowing you to trigger snapshots. Now this one is a little bit tricky to install and I usually follow this video tutorial by a fellow YouTuber literally every single time that I need to install it because there are a lot of different steps and things you need to check and set up. Fortunately, if you persist and assuming your camera is compatible, you will eventually persevere and get to the point where you can trigger a snapshot from a shell command. From there, you need to install G-Code shell command which creates a way for you to trigger that shell command you guessed it, using G-code. Thanks to K-I-A-U-H, this is really, really simple to do. From there, you have a few options. You can, if you want, just add that G-code to your next layer code in your slicer, and you're done. Or if you want to create more silky smooth time lapses with a Park tool head, you'll want to install the time lapse module we discussed earlier, and then piggyback off of it by simply inserting the appropriate snapshot G-code alongside its own instructions. I do that by putting it right here. Again, I'll be honest, I often struggle to configure these two modules, even though I've done it a number of times. So maybe I'll just ask my assistant Leslie to please take the awesome video that I linked in the description and maybe she can merge it into one easy to follow tutorial that you guys and I myself can use. And if we do get around to it, we'll put it up on our website, thenextlayer.com, which is still very much a work in progress. If you do get it to work though, I would love it if you guys shared some of those beautiful time lapses in the time lapses channel on our Discord server. Link once again in the description below. Okay, one last nice to have before we part ways and I go stand by the AC because as you can see, it is really hot. And that last one is Clipper Screen. 
I know, I know, you guys have called me spoiled before for insisting on putting touchscreens on literally every one of my printers, but what can I say? I'm, I'm lazy and I really don't like doing a lot of clicking around to get to what I want. Clipper screen allows us to control our entire printer, even initiating prints right from an easy to follow and easy to use touchscreen. Sure, your standard printer interface does allow you to do basic things like loading and unloading filament. But one of the things that I really love about Clipper screen is the ability to add custom macros for things like cleaning the nozzle and so on. If you're like me and your computer isn't sitting right next to your printer or printers, this one tool alone will save you tons of walking back and forth for things like initiating prints, turning off the LEDs, cleaning nozzles, and much, much more. Oh, and here once again, you can thank Kaiyua for making the install super easy. Aren't you glad that we covered that first? Finally, if you aren't sure which screen works for you when adding Clipper screen to your setup, I will provide a link in the description below to Big Tree Tech, which offers a variety of screens in all different sizes and shapes for every printer. And I've really been enjoying mine on my Voron 2.4. So there you have it, nine of my favorite must have upgrades for your Clipper 3D printer. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and make sure you're subscribed because we put out a new video just like it every single week. If you really enjoy our content, then consider becoming a Patreon supporter or a recently launched YouTube member and you can get exclusive behind the scenes content, early access to new product information when I'm allowed to talk about it, and discounts at some premier vendors and much, much more. And of course, thanks to those of you who already are supporters, because as you know, I really appreciate you guys. That's all for now. I need to go figure out why the AC doesn't seem to be working, but I will see all of you on the next layer.